Hey TPT sellers, in this episode, let's talk about how to beat a product with 2,660 reviews with TPT SEO. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, yeah, sure. If you have a product with 3,000 reviews, then you can beat a product with 2.6 thousand reviews. I get it. Well, let's talk about how a product with nine reviews can beat a product with 2,660 reviews on TPT. I'm going to go to TPT. I'm going to search up team building activities. There are 27,000 results for team building activities. Today is Saturday, September 21st, 2024. And the very first result with no filters is this resource here with a five-star rating and nine reviews. This is the first resource, second, third, fourth, fifth, the sixth resource has 1.6 thousand reviews, seven, nine, 10, 12, 13. The 13th resource has 1.9 thousand reviews, 14, 15, 16, 17. We'll talk about this one more. Notice how team building is not even in the title. It just has activities, 18, 19. So in 19th place is this resource with 2.7 thousand reviews. In this episode, we're gonna talk about how a resource with only nine reviews can beat this resource that has clearly sold way more than nine reviews. I'm gonna introduce the case study. I'll talk about what I think is happening from a TPT SEO perspective. We'll do some deep analysis with this keyword and I'll summarize some TPT SEO ideas at the end. This episode is for TPT hamsters and TPT hawks. If you're not sure what I mean by that, check out the free business course up there. So let's talk about this case study. This is episode 14 of my Sunday SEO secret series where we dive into the TPT developer manual. Today, we're gonna look at this keyword because it's unusual. If you've been watching this series for a while, you know that TPT search uses Algolia, which is a tie-breaking ranking formula. If you haven't checked it out yet, there is a free TPT SEO masterclass, so you don't have to pay hundreds of dollars for TPT SEO. It's a great summary of all of the TPT SEO secrets that I've learned from studying the Algolia manual. Today's episode, we're just looking at one example for TPT search. And my question to you is, does my explanation in this episode explains some of the weird things that you have seen in TPT land recently. So I've chatted with a few TPT sellers who've talked to me about how they think the search algorithm is being changed and TPT isn't letting us know about it. And their reason for this is that in first or second place, there are a couple of resources that they don't expect to see because they have so little reviews. So I'm gonna walk through what I think is happening in this case. And if you've seen strange results in TPT land recently, let me know in the comments if my theory applies to your scenario. Sometimes the unexpected happens as a teacherpreneur, but unexpected doesn't mean that the sky is falling. When we see unusual things in TPT search, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're changing the search algorithm. Actually, they're constantly changing the search algorithm. Large companies do constant A-B testing where they're trying different things with the formula to see which one has a better result. So sometimes the results that I see may be different than the results that you see because we're seeing different versions of the search engine. Sometimes we feel that unexpected things are unfair. I worked so hard to get my resource into the first page of TPT search and then there's an unexpected search algorithm change and now I'm not in the first page anymore and grr, that makes me mad. And I think that's human nature to feel that way. If you haven't read this book or listened to it, Who Moved My Cheese is excellent in terms of changing our mindset in how we deal with change. So when I'm in a good place, I like to view the unexpected as an opportunity for learning. TPT is a long journey. There are ups and downs and sometimes I need to take a break. But when I'm in a good space, and if you're in a good space right now, then let's see what we can learn from unexpected, unusual search results. So that example I showed you at the beginning about team building activities, it's unusual for two reasons. The first reason is because on page one in position one, we have a resource that's $5 and only has nine reviews and it's out competing a resource on the 19th position on that page, which has 2.7 thousand reviews. Some TPT sellers have reported to me that sometimes in that first position, they've seen resources that they feel shouldn't be in the first position because they have so few sales. The second thing that's unusual about this search term is that activities is highlighted in purple, but activity singular is not highlighted in purple, which to me, means that 
activity singular is not a synonym for activities. In other words, because it's not highlighted by purple, I don't think the TPT SEO algorithm is thinking about activity singular in the same way. But when I dive into the data, it clearly views the two words as similar, even though it's not highlighting both of them. So let me know what you think, because I'm still a little bit baffled about why activity singular isn't highlighted in purple. If I look at this first example, activities is what I'm searching for, team building activities. I can see that the word activity by itself, singular, it's not highlighted in purple. So to me, that means that that it shouldn't be considered by the search engine. And when I scroll down, eventually I find something that has activities, plural, and I can see that it's highlighted in purple. So this is an outlier to me because activity should be highlighted and it's not. I used the keyword tool to figure out the ranks and positions and the number of reviews for the resources on the first 10 pages. There are 24 resources per page. So that's the first 240 resources. When you download the ultimate bundle, it's TPT seller tip number 10. And when I get the Google sheet, TPT keyword position tracking tool. When I open up the Google Sheet, I have to read and accept the terms of service and allow access to the internet. What this tool does is I can type a search term like team building activity, plural, and hit enter. And Google Sheet will connect to the TPT website, look at the results on the first 10 pages. And then at the top, if I type my store name, like edge circles, I can see that right now, I'm at rank 72 at the bottom of page three. If I scroll down, I can see here in position one, there's this resource with only nine reviews. And in position 19, here's the resource with 2,660 reviews. So this is kind of a cool way to see where you rank for different keywords. So what I did in today's episode was I modified it so I could see where the keywords were in the title. You'll see what I mean in a bit. When I color code the number of reviews, we can see the first 24 results. Uh, the lowest reviews are in red, the highest reviews are in green. And we can see on this first page, it's mostly green, except for this first position resource, which is a very odd, unusual outlier. So what's happening from a TPT SEO perspective? How can a nine review resource beat a review with 2,600 reviews. I think most of us would agree that's pretty odd. This is the first 24 resources on the first page. If I zoom out and look at the first 100 resources, so there's one, two, three, four, four pages and a bit. When I look at the color-coded reviews, I see a bunch of green reviews. So resources with a lot of reviews near the top of the listing. And then as you get Further and further in pages, I see more and more red reviews, which means they have fewer reviews. And then that first number one is quite the outlier. There's only one red line at the top. Everything else is green. And if I zoom out even more and look at the first 240 resources, there's a pretty clear pattern where the green resources are at the top. And then as you get further down, you get more and more red resources which means those resources have fewer reviews. This gray line on the left-hand side, those are resources above rank number 100. So the top 100 is this top spot up here with the white background. So I don't think TPT is changing the search algorithm. I think what's happening is that dynamic re-ranking is kicking in. TPT has been using dynamic re-ranking for a while. If you haven't watched it yet, check out episode nine in the Sunday series because I do a deep dive into what the dynamic re-ranking algorithm or artificial intelligence code does. It boosts resources based on how attractive they are, how popular they are becoming. The default setting is for re-ranking to promote up to 20 items with the highest attractiveness score matching specific criteria per query. And so what that means is it is search term dependent. This resource with nine reviews might be at the top of the list for team building activities because people are look at team building activities and then they're clicking on the resource or they're buying the resource or they're previewing the resource or doing some sort of conversion event. But just because it's doing well with team building activities, that doesn't mean it's going to do well with survival game or a different keyword that it's trying to rank for. So this attractiveness score, this popularity score is specific to the keyword and you have a different attractiveness for every keyword. I skimmed through this image last time but I think we need to do a closer look at the re-ranking simulator that Algolia has. On the left-hand side, we have a bunch of resources that are showing up for the search term Lego in their simulation. And the left side in gray, 
Those are the ranks of the products based purely on SEO. So the first seven criteria in Algolia for relevance, and then the eighth rule, which is business metrics. But on the right hand side in blue, what's happened is that the first 20 have been shuffled around based on how popular the first 20 resources are. The changes might be minor. Here's example number seven, and I can see that it's gone up by one. And if I look at this chart here, I can see here's example seven, and without dynamic re-ranking, it would have been a rank of eight. So it's only gone up by one. But if you look at this graph, some of these resources have significant changes, like the resource in position 20 after dynamic re-ranking, it dropped all the way from position five. So this resource should have been position five based on, but because people aren't clicking on this resource after they search up Lego, for example, I can see right here, it looks like Lego pencil crayons. So that makes sense to me. People aren't clicking on this resource because it's not actually Lego blocks. It's not, it's not what people are looking for when they want Lego. And remember this because this ties into search intent. Resource number five on the left, based purely on SEO, would have been position rank number five. But when you look up Lego, you're looking for Lego to buy, to play with. And so then people are skipping, they're not clicking on resource number five. And because they're not clicking on it, then its attractiveness goes down compared to the other 20 resources. And so that's why it's gone as low as it can. It's dropped to position 20. This is the default setting. Dynamic re-ranking typically works with the first 20 resources in the search listing. But the manual tells us that you can increase the number of records that get re-ranked from the default of 20 to 100. So I think TPT has dynamic re-ranking set to something like 80 or 100. Because if you look at the bottom of the first 100 resources here, seeing resources with reviews that are red, it's pretty common on that page number four. I think what happened is the resource with nine reviews had enough TPT SEO in it to get to page four. People started to, they're typing team building activities. They're scrolling through page one. I don't see what I want. Page two, page three, page four. I don't see what I want. Oh, that's exactly what I want. And they buy it, or at least they look at the preview. And by looking at the preview or adding it to cart or adding it to wishlist, I think that sends a signal to the attractiveness of this resource and it bumps up higher in rank. Does everyone go to page four before they buy a product? No, but if a few people do it and you get boosted up to page three, then you're seen by more people. And then you get boosted up to page two because more people are clicking on your resource to learn more until you get to page one. And then even though all of these resources are about team building, I think when you're looking for team building activities on TPT, you're searching for a specific kind of activity. And I wonder if this resource with nine reviews is exactly what people are looking for. And so then it gets a lot of clicks. People go to the product page and then people look at the preview they add it to wish list or they buy the resource. And that is what Algolia Search defines as attractiveness or popularity. So in episode nine, the takeaway was that if you have 20 click events or two conversion events within the last 30 days, then you are considered attractive. And the conversion events are probably looking at the preview, adding the wish list, adding the cart, or actually buy the resource. We know from the Algolia manual, the way that the rules are applied, while well, the first seven rules, which I call technical TPT SEO, so that's like stuff about keywords in the title, that's applied first, it figures out your rank, and then the last rule, rule number eight in this section, is based on business metric, and that's the secret sauce, where we don't know how it's taking our page views or our purchases or those numbers, our product stats, but somehow it's converting that into a SEO score and it's sorting our resources. After that, if personalization was a thing, then our resources would get shuffled based on the kinds of things that we are looking for in the past. I don't think personalization is turned on right now because when I do a search and you do a search, we get the exact same search results. After personalization, then TPT can boost or bury categories, entire categories with hard-coded rules. I don't think that's in play right now because we're looking at a specific product. Then we have dynamic re-ranking. So dynamic re-ranking is one of the last things to affect our TPT rank. The very last thing is if there is a hard-coded rule that says, hey, this resource should be more popular 
it gets boosted to the front, then that happens at the end. So that will override dynamic re-ranking. And it's easy to wonder, well, maybe, maybe that's what's happening in this case. But there are enough TPT sellers who are looking at different keywords and noticing, hey, that's really odd that you could have a resource with so few sales in the first position. It seems unlikely that that's being hard-coded as a rule that that one resource should be at the top. So dynamic re-ranking, I think, changes everything in the top 100 resources for a search term. So now the real question is, yep, there's an outlier. There's a resource with nine reviews at the top of this search term. The real question is, well, what makes that resource so attractive to humans that they click on it or they view the preview or add it to cart or purchase the resource? Why are humans doing this? And if I asked you, well, what makes a resource attractive? You would probably tell me, well, it's covers and product snippets, Mike. Okay. Well, what is it about the cover or the snippet that is so attractive? A good cover and a good introduction snippet is effective in communicating what's in the resource. Well, what is effective communication? When a human looks at that resource, they see instantly how that resource can help solve whatever problem brought them to TPT. And more importantly, they see that that cover and the snippet matches what the teacher is searching for. It matches the search intent. And this comes down to sales psychology. So now the real question is, how do you show that your resource solves their problem instead of telling them that their resource solves their problem? And this is why product mockups are so important because the teacher can visually see, oh yeah, that's exactly the kind of handout I'm looking for. I'm looking for a coloring paste. That looks awesome. My kids are going to love it. And just by showing a really good product, you've shown to the teacher how your resource solves their problem. But remember how earlier I talked about how the search term and the product have to match in terms of search intent? In this re-ranking simulator, the person is searching up Lego because they want to buy Lego to play with. And resource number five, based purely on keyword, technical SEO stuff, and business metrics, maybe this resource is a top seller. It should be in number five, but it's not something that people are actually buying when they search for Lego. These look like pencil crayons. So then the system knows that it's got very few clicks when people are searching for Lego. So that's why it's dropped from position number five all the way to position number 20. But this is a scenario where only the top 20 resources are having this dynamic re-ranking applied. What if it was the first 100 resources? Then this resource in position five could drop to position 100 because it doesn't match the search intent. People aren't looking for pencil crayons when they're searching for Lego. So now I think dynamic re-ranking applies to the first 100 resources in a TPT search result page, which means TPT SEO can only get you so far. You can do all the right things with the keywords, you can put them in the right places, and you can get to the top 100, and dynamic re-ranking will kick in. And if your resource is not attractive, or if your resource isn't really what that search term is about, then the sales psychology will push it down to rank 100. It's not really what people are looking for. On the other hand, if you can use TPT SEO to get the page four of a search result, so that's position 72 to 96, then re-ranking kicks in. And then if your resource starts to get purchased or people are curious about it because it's exactly what they need, then eventually you'll start to snowball and get to the first page. And that's what I think happened in this case. But key takeaway is you can use the technical stuff that we think about as TPT SEO. You can use that to get to the first 20 to 100 results. So by technical TPT SEO, I mean the keyword research to find niche unicorns and then title optimization. All the stuff that I talked about in that free TPT SEO course at the start of this video. But the second important takeaway is that you need to use sales psychology to get you from position 100 to position number one. And that means your cover and your snippet have to effectively communicate the value of your resource. You need to show, don't tell, show how your resource solves the teacher's problem. Have you learned something new? If you have, can you please like the video? It encourages me to make more content like this for you for free. So please like the video if you haven't done so already. Let's do a little bit of a deeper analysis because maybe there's another reason 
why that resource got to position number one. Maybe there's something else that's unusual about it. When we look at number of reviews, that first resource is clearly an outlier with only nine reviews. When we look at the top 100, we've already seen that the beginning section, there's mostly the green resources with lots of reviews. And then the lower you get in the search results, the fewer reviews you have. So it's definitely a little bit odd to have a resource with only nine reviews so high up. And when I look at the scale of 240 resources, the top 10 pages of the search term, I definitely see a pattern where it's green at the top and then you get more red and then a lot of red. But what about price? Maybe price is what's driving that resource up to the top. Okay, well, when I color code the products based on price, where expensive products or products with higher prices are in green, like this resource here for $29. Lower price products are red, like this resource here with $2. I don't really see a pattern. And this top resource, it's in the middle. It has a white color. When I look at the top 100, again, I don't see a clear pattern like before where there was green at the top and red at the bottom. So the price is kind of everywhere. And when I scale back to look at the top 240 resources, I can see at the bottom here, around page nine and page eight, there's some dark green resources. So price alone isn't dragging things up or down. If I put the number of reviews on the left-hand side, I can see that the green reviews are up at the top. So there are resources with lots of reviews at the top of the search, but I don't see a clear pattern like that with price. What about the actual rating? Well, I will point out that the top resource here does have a five-star rating. The light pink color here the third resource has a rating of 4.74, but it seems to be a good mix. There's, there's some pink resources interspersed with the green. When I scale out to 100 resources, I see green resources spread across the top 100. So it's not like the best rated resources are all at the top. And when I scale out to 240 resources, again, I see green ends throughout the top 240. So I don't think there's a pattern with reading. And just for comparison, you can see on the far left-hand side, when we were talking about the number of reviews, which is an indicator of how many resources or how many times people have bought it, resources with lots of sales tend to be at the top because those are the green. And then as you go down the search pages, you get more resources that have sold fewer times, which makes sense. A few TPT sellers have reached out to me with questions about the number of words that you have in your search term that should be in your title and whether the proximity or the position of those words matter. So here's what I discovered. Team building activities has three words. And when I look for the word team in the title of the first 24 resources, they all have team except for resource number 17, which is about Halloween. When I look for the word building, again, the first 24 resources in the title, they have the word building somewhere, except for resource number 17, which is about Halloween. When I look for activity, which is highlighted in purple with TPT search, it's unusual because the first, because the first eight here don't have activities. But when I look for activity singular, I see that, well, okay, those first eight didn't have activities plural, but they have activity singular. This is why I think the search algorithm is taking activities and activity both to me the same thing, because these resources have either one or the other. The search term is team building activities. There's three words. If I count the number of matching words, your best score is three. So in terms of the Algolia buckets, you would have three matching words and then two matching words and then maybe you have one of the search terms. And then if you have none of them, you won't show up on the listing at all. So when I look at the first 24 resources, all of the resources have all three words, except for resource number 17, which only has one. And resource number 17 has activities, plural. If I zoom out to look at the top 100, the first 100 resources all have the three words in the search term somewhere in their title, team, building activities. So right now the order doesn't matter. It just is in the title somewhere. And if finally, if I zoom out to the top 240 resources, you can see they all have all three words except for a second outlier there with that white stripe. So now I'm curious to see whether it matters if the words are side by side. So for example, team building, if those are side by side, do you rank higher? The other pair is building activities. If you have building and activity side by side, does that make a difference? And in this case, you could have team building together and building activity together. So you would have two points or you would only have team building or building activity. So that's one point. 
or I guess you could have none of that, which would be zero points. And in this case, you can see about half of the resources have two of those phrases like team building or building activities. They have both of them together somewhere. And then the rest have one or zero. If I zoom out, here are the top 100. And it looks like about half of them have have the two words side by side. And if I zoom out to the top 240, again, there's no clean pattern here. Some of the resources have team building and building activity, and some of the resources don't. So that's a clear difference from the first question, which is, do you have all three words? Because when I asked, do you have all three words? They all do. They all have team and building activity somewhere. Well, what about the exact phrase, team building activity in that order? It's a little bit less. It's still about half. And I don't see a clear pattern where all of the green are at the top and it, there's nothing obvious that stands out to me. When I zoom out to the top 100, again, same sort of thing. I don't really see a clear pattern. If I zoom out to the top 240, I don't know. Maybe there's a couple of bands in the middle, like where they're kind of grouped together, but it's hard to see if there's a pattern. So the white stripes are resources that don't have team building activity in that exact phrase. And there's a good number of white stripes in the top 240 resources here and the top page. So this makes me think maybe having the exact phrase isn't a deal breaker. If I put these side by side, here it is for three words. If you have all three words, you have a green stripe. If you have a two word phrase like team building and building activities, if you have both of those word pairs, that's the green stripe in the second one. And then in the first one, you have you have a green stripe if you have all three words somewhere in any order. So for me, the takeaway is put all of the words that you're trying to rank for in the title, but the proximity or the order of the words may not give you as much of a boost as, as we hoped it would. Now in the Algolia manual, the default setting is to give more points if the exact phrasing is at the beginning of the title or the snippet or wherever. So I look at whether there was a difference between whether you had the exact phrase at the start of the title or somewhere in the title. So if I look for titles like team building activity, survival game, the search phrase is at the very beginning. And that is true for our outlier here, but I don't know if that's what got it to position one. I don't think it did. Because when I look at all of the other resources on that first page, only two of the 24 have the exact key phrase at the beginning. Now, it may not make a difference from a TPT SEO perspective, but it might make a difference from a sales psychology perspective. They're scanning the resources, they type team building activities or they clicked on that in search and then they see the resource. It says literally team building activity right there at the beginning. So that might catch their attention, which leads them to click on it. And that click makes that resource seem more attractive to TPT. So, so putting it at the very beginning might still have value from a sales psychology perspective. If I zoom out to see the top 100, I can see very few resources have the entire phrase at the start of the title. And when I zoom out to the top 240, I'm not really seeing any patterns here. I don't know, let me know what you think. Side by side, the exact phrase somewhere in the title is a lot more common. Having some words together seems to be about the same as having the exact phrase. And then the first question, with all search words in the title, everyone is doing that to get into the top of this search result. Have you learned something new? If you have, can you please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already? Because that's a social signal to other TPT sellers that, hey, this is content worth checking out. The larger this channel gets, the bigger the snowball grows, and then more people start following because, well, other people are following it. And then it's just, it's a positive virtuous cycle. So if you've learn something new, please hit that subscribe button. Let's summarize what I've learned today. And maybe these are things that you've learned as well. If you agree or disagree with these ideas, I'd love to start a conversation in the comments. So here's a pretty picture with all the questions we asked today. I think the biggest takeaway is if you want to rank for a keyword phrase, you need to have all of the keywords somewhere in the title. And of course, the more reviews you have, the more likely you are at the top of the list. But there are always exceptions to the rules. And those outliers are really interesting because they show us things about how the system works. To answer the question of how a resource with only nine reviews can beat a resource with 2000 reviews, I think the answer is dynamic re-ranking. I think that resource with that red stripe got into that fourth page, it got into the top 100, and then once it got to the top 100, then, Every time people clicked on the resource after searching up 
team building activities. Once you have 20 clicks within the last 30 days, you start to build rank. I learned that TPT SEO can only get you so far in the game. It can get you to the top 100, but after you get to the top 100, then that sales psychology piece becomes so important in terms of bringing you up or bringing you down to position 100. And again, technical TPT SEO, stuff like finding the right keywords and putting the keywords in your title, that will only take you so far. We've got to make sure that our covers and snippet clearly communicate to teachers how our resource solves their problem. If you're still watching this video, I have a huge favor. If this video was useful to you, can you please share it with others? Making these Sunday videos takes a lot of research. Each video takes around 10 hours, and that's 10 hours that I spent today on this video that I didn't spend working on my TPT store. I love making these videos. It brings me a lot of joy. But a TPT seller that I respect recently said, if I'm a full-time TPT seller, then I have to be making full-time money. And that means making good business choices. So I'm on a sprint right now to see what I can do to help the TPT seller community. I need your help growing this channel because then I can justify the time that I spend on this passion project because it's time that's taking away from me working for my small business digital marketing clients, for my TPT seller store, and other business ventures. So if you like the content and you find it useful for you, please share this content. I know lots of you share it already. Thank you so much for leaving these video links in the Facebook groups and on the TPT forums. I appreciate it. You're helping us grow. The snowball and a rising tide lifts all boats in the harbor. If you have any questions or if you have anything that I missed or if you disagree with anything in this video, please leave a comment and I'll see you next time. Have a great day. Bye-bye now.